Let's talk about the API in Safeguard. As you already know, Safeguard exposes a REST-based API and the REST API can be used by various programming languages like any language you, you know or maybe by shells, shell scripting languages or other ones. And we have a nice little feature inside Safeguard that we expose this API via the Swagger interface that it can be used inside the browser. I'm going to come back to this in a couple of seconds. First of all, uh, I want to show you a little use case about this. And in this case, I'm going to go for the licensing module. And if I go to the settings page in Safeguard and click on the licensing module here, it displays um, the current status of the appliance in terms of the license. And in this case, you have two licenses installed, one for the password management and one for the session module. Okay, pretty easy. So how to achieve this with the API? To get access to the API, you're going to call the API just in a simple browser with the URL shown above. And before you can do anything or you may have uh, or you, you may need some kind of authorization, it is very wise to click on this authorize button here. Click in, log in with a standard username. Here we go. And now you're going to see the API in that Swagger interface. And the very nice thing in the Swagger interface is that you can just click on these various lines here and then you're going to dig into the class definitions here. And you're going to see in the appliance status uh, some kind of appliance status. And you see on these colors here, this is a get, this is a post, this is a put. So that is just the stuff you can use to get information or post information back to stuff or just uh, do an update, something like that. In our case, we're just going to click on this appliance status. And now you're going to see the Swagger interface here. It shows you some example stuff here that is whatever, how the, how the response usually is structured. And it gives you some kind of information how the interface behaves, it's a bad or, or good request. And there is this little button, try it out. And now with that button, you can just call the API and see what comes back in that browser. So let's do so. So if you click on try it out, you see that you now have a response. And first of all, you see some kind of example how to call the API using curl. It's a nice little tool. Here's the request URL you, you're going to point this URL to. And here is the response that came back from the system. And if you can compare this with the, with the information that is displayed here, you're going to see that we now have a trial. We have a password management that expires on the 6th of April. You're going to see this here as well, 6th of April and so on and so on. All this information that is located here is displayed here as well. So this is a very nice feature to use the API to get information of the appliance. But not only of information on the appliance, but we can of course do configuration work using the API. And we're going to show you this in the following example. So let's do some kind of asset management using the API. To do this, we have to switch from the appliance status Swagger API or to a different API that is called the core API. The core API is again exposed in the Swagger interface and it has a different URI that is written here. And of course, we're going to authorize, we're going to, authorize to use this and enter my password. So we have now authorized to the Swagger interface. It takes a little time to retrieve all the list of classes and methods we can invoke. And now you see a different list as the other one you have seen recently in the Appliance API. So this is the core API. The other one was the Appliance API. There are a couple of more APIs exposed. So we have something that is called asset and we want to make some changes to the asset. So and of course, we want to see how this is reflected in the client. So we have our Windows client running here. So we're going to switch to the asset tab over there. And you see our assets that we have created earlier. And now we're going to go to the asset class and all the methods we can invoke here. So the first first we need is to get a list of assets. And there's some kind of list call that gives you all the information on the defined assets here and simply click on that get button to make this 
and you see the usual stuff how this is structured you see the uh, simple uh, sample output and in this case we just go for the try it out button again and there's a couple of filters and uh, in this case you may want to limit the the results maybe back to the the name of the of the asset you want to look for in the in our example we only have four so we're going to give you a full list on this we want to change the name of the asset name bad unix to something more familiar like nice unix for instance whatever you want to name it for and just to get a list of the, all the assets we can just simply hit the button try it out and now you see uh, the response there's a long list of things that now have been listed out. The first thing, it starts with ID2. Description is the IMS10 Linux server. And this is the system here. And it goes on and on and on and on. Now it's the, this is a very long list of information. Now it goes to ID3. This is the IMS02 SARE server. It's our next asset and you can scroll down it's id4 it's the windows pc and if you scroll further down it comes back with that id number seven this is our unix system we have just created in a different video with the name of bad unix it doesn't matter i know this i know that this is here okay so it's a very long list maybe we can try to limit the outcome a little bit to get to a more specific result once we have seen now that the id of our asset is seven we simply can go back to the swagger interface page here and just may enter id equals seven and then execute again so there's a filter now applied to that request and now we only get the information on this uh, ID number seven. This is our Linux system and it has the name bad Unix. So that's the one we are looking for. I now gonna copy all this response information to into my copy buffer. And now I'm gonna close this API class because I will not use this. Because now I want to do an update. And now I want to use this one here to create, to update an asset. Because now I know my asset has the ID number seven. I'm gonna go to this put method here. And it's, here's the example, how, what is to be filled. And you see that is just the same amount of information I just have copied over from the, from the get request. So in this case, I know my ID is seven. So I enter seven here. And the entity here is just a copy of all the stuff I have copied before. And just to make an update, I just have to make it a little bit for easier reading. And I now go to the name bad Unix. I just have to find it. It is really a pain in this interface. Here it is, the name. We knew we we're gonna go for this, for this one here. So this is nice Unix and we try that. And now you see that in the client, the name change was reflected. So that is the way to work with the API with the help of the, this browser-based Swagger interface. Of course, you can use your own editing tools and your own methods, uh, how to work with that. Just a small example, what you need, how to look you up your information you're required, and then how to post it back to the system. And of course, you can use any function in the API. And in the API, there are a lot, lot more information and methods available as this is used by our current client.